Hey, my leading, how y'all doing today? Uh, I'm doing going back to a, do a 70s review, a uh, film from the 70s I saw last night on Retroplex. Now, the one thing a lot of people, a lot of critics and people say that the 70s were the best decade for movies. And we they put out some good product. I mean, and they were all like classy done. And even the PG uh, rated movies had to look but R rated film. Like the one I'm reviewing now was PG rated, but it looks like an R rated film, you know. And uh, it was back in the days when everything was done practically, no CGI or computer. So the filmmakers had a real challenge to make everything look incredibly believable, you know. They didn't rely on CGI like to do now, or, you know. And then like super bloated budget budget set. I don't know. A lot of times, I don't know how Hollywood should stay in business because a lot of the big budget movies, they spend so much money on them, and a lot of times they don't recoup that back or they just break even, and you can't make money if you just break even. But this was, I don't know how much the budget was for this, but this was from the producer of the movie Bullet, made by 1968, the year I was born, and it's called The Seven Ups. And why it's called The Seven Ups is it's about like a <clears throat> task force of... Um, Run by Roy Scheider. It's like a oh, it's a, like a bunch of undercover cops, and they take down. And their main job is to take down criminals guilty of offenses that would get them a minimum sentence of seven years in prison. That's why I call the Seven Ups, because the uh, the sentence would be seven years and up, right? And what happened was. Uh, this one guy, Roy Shea, had his, his one of his best friends, uh, played by Tony Bianco, and he double crosses him, and uses the uh, the policeman's secret list of mob loan sharks to kidnap crooks, to kidnap the mob boss on there and hold them for ransom. And I don't want to give away much more, but I mean, it's a really good movie, solid film, and also too the the two guys that kidnap. The mobsters, which is bad anyways, you know, and it's really clever how they do it and they hold them for ransom and stuff, uh, are played by guys, are played by, uh, I can't remember the guy's name. Joe Spinell, that's his name. Joe Spinell, who got famous for being in Maniac and also the last horror film, which uh, Chroma Bond and called it Fanatic, and also Richard uh, Lynch. Before he really became a bad guy in the eighties, you know, and this was made in nineteen seventy. Well, I I heard it was seventy four. Now it says seventy three now in here, but it's a really good movie. It's PG rated, and this is I remember seeing it a long time ago growing up in the house in Cranesville because this is back when the local TV stations used to play movies and stuff. You know, instead of all the infomercials, they used to play movies in the afternoon and stuff. They played Seven Ups a lot, and then Channel Twelve had the, like the they had like all night movies Saturday, and then they had Sunday night. They had like the Sunday night movie after you know the news and George Michael Sports Machine. They had that at midnight, and then after that was done, they'd sign off the air. This is back when stations used to sign off the air, you know. And CBS used to run that movie a lot, and so did uh, our CBS station, and uh, so did the NBC station. It's a great movie. It's very entertaining. I give it a nine out of ten. It's a solid action flick. And like I said, these were different. These were back when the movies are different than they are now. But I thought it was really good. Roy Scheider, Tony B. L. Bianco, Joe Spinell, uh, Richard Lynch. A whole bunch of great. It, it's very entertaining very good. I think you'll like it. It's on Retroplex. The only thing that made me mad <clears throat> is not to follow the movie was Retroplex. That digital, they keep screwing up the digital because like it, they, the frame of the picture would keep freezing up. The soundtrack go, but the picture would freeze up, and they was doing it in between in, in the car chase too. They had a really big car chase, and that kind of that really took me out of the movie. But that's a shame. But I mean, it's not the fault of the film; it's fault of uh, Encore's Retroplex or Encore Encore in general, because sometimes they're uh, digital ain't the greatest. So, hope you liked this review, and until next time, everybody, please take care, of my legion.